All right, so the previous example was straightforward and simple, just to illustrate how the method works in general. However, this one is going to be more tricky, and therefore I hope it would be more beneficial because this is the kind of situation why I came up with this method that helps me identify or at least reduce the amount of mistakes that I could be making. So for instance, you know, if I'm blocking this plane and I am kind of making the, figuring out the line of the cockpit here, like here, for instance, okay, so there are two things that I mentioned before that I find this method to be essential for. And the first one would be scale. And uh, that means the scale of, for instance, this cockpit in relation to maybe is it as big as this, right? Or is it as big as this? Or is this, you know, whatever. The other one would be probably more important uh, or at least I should say the problems that we face with placement tend to be in many cases more damaging or more time consuming to fix than scale. So that's why I think this one is the biggest benefit of this technique. Either way, both of them are very important. Uh, if we can be as accurate as possible with them, then that is a winner. What I would like to do here is, for instance, I need to figure out um, where the beginning and the ending of this wing attachment, if you must, is, um, again, number one, how big is it? In terms of um, the full scale of aircraft. And also um, the placement of it, meaning that is this like 10%? Because that's going to make a big difference in the blocking and it's going to give you a lot of comfort knowing that you're doing things properly. Like, oh, okay, so let's say my geometry blocking is like 10 inch, then I would just leave a gap here of 1 inch knowing that this is where the wing attachment is going to start, right? And then I need to figure out where this is located. So with that said, the first step, just like I demonstrated in the previous example, is to put the main shape of the plane in a box. So I need to aim to have this area all the way till here. Um, I would go here and investigate and figure out the exact ending of this. So I would say maybe it's somewhere here. So I would say, let me undo, maybe go all the way here. Let me just redo it. Um, I can also go with a polygonal tool. So L on the keyboard and then shift L to change the lasso tool to polygonal. And then I can just make, as you can see, it goes in straight lines. So I can go here, and of course I do have a new layer. And then I would just go all the way there, double click, and then Alt Backspace. So, so as you can see, it doesn't look right. So I might have missed here the corner or something like that. So I would need to revisit and identify. And this is the area here that is um, confusing me with that tail. So um, I would I would look into this area. Probably it's easier to read than this because I can see the silhouette, right? And understanding that these are thrusters and technically they would be, uh, and these are the thrusters, so therefore they would be an important part of the full body. So I would need to go from here all the way to here. Maybe I should include maybe this line here. So I would be probably on a safer side. And I can, of course, identify the line because of the tip here and the tip here. So that makes it easy for me based on the shape of those tips. So I would just go here and here and then extend a little bit 
and extend a little bit and then go all the way here and I want to make sure it does match here with here my tablet is a little close to the microphone so if you hear some weird scratchy noises sorry about that okay so um, it looks it looks okay so this is a let me choose something warmer and darker so let's call this the main box and that main box is going to be containing the overall body of the ship these things are additions at least as far as I'm concerned for the sake of finding out the percentage because right now as I mentioned before I want to identify the 100% of that ship versus figuring out the other things so I think it looks okay and I'm gonna move on now to create a new layer I'm gonna make that with some red colors I'm going to use the mouse so I don't deal with the pressure sensitivity when I'm making those X's so it would be more accurate uh, the other thing also I could do is I can go with a bigger brush and I'm gonna hit the uh, caps lock so I would see an X so it might be easier to catch and even if those lines were thick I can just go and reduce the opacity of the layer but I'm gonna make sure the hardness is all the way there okay so I think the hardness was so I think the hardness was my issue go here to the corner and then here okay so I would go here with parallel lines to this one here uh, if in some cases you were kind of like thinking oh my god this is kind of like how do I make it perfectly par parallel to this line to transfer it here so there's always a cheat right so control shift n a new layer and then I would go here and then create this line and then V on the keyboard to go to the select tool and there you go and if it is shorter then that's usually a sign that it's it's good because it should be um, giving that uh, feeling of the uh, change of perspective all right so control t and i can scale it up a little bit and then zoom in and just kind of try to match it notice here that sometimes the snapping annoys you that it's it's kind of like not really going as freely as i freely as i wanted so in case you had that issue whether it's in photoshop or in after effects uh, usually it's um it's an easy fix you just click and hold control and then the, this snapping that happens doesn't take place so to deactivate temporarily the snapping the control is um, the way to fix it and I found this information to be extremely helpful and useful in many cases so add it to your must learn tricks about Photoshop okay so now with that said how does that help me I don't really care for this side for instance at least hypothetically let me hit V on the keyboard and then hit let's say 7 on the numbers to give 70% opacity for that layer and for the X as well I can actually merge them now uh, I'm gonna give them both 100% opacity and right mouse button merge down okay and then V on the keyboard and then 7 so that gives them 70% or maybe even 5 50% opacity okay so 
I don't really care to uh, to know what's in here. Here's the X again. So uh, caps lock. I'm gonna create a new layer so I can paint in a way that is more easily seen, right? So I don't really care about this area here. Then why should I care about the 50%? The uh, fact is that we care about the 50% mark because then we would be able to figure out the 25% and then the 12.5% and the 6.25%. And therefore, we would eventually be able to say, you know what, this is here the 75% mark of the 50%. So again, um, I'm just going to say that one more time. This area here is 50% of the full length of the ship, right? Doesn't mean the mass of the ship, because obviously this has much more mass than this area. But in terms of the length, this takes up 50% or makes up 50%. Good. That's good information. Let me make the opacity of it 40%, clicking 4 on the keyboard. So, yeah, um, I'm just going to color it this way so it would be kind of easier to see, right? So, uh, this here is the area where I have 50%. Here's a new layer, so I can make a more saturated uh, notes. This here is the 50% of the 50%. 50 let me make it uh, black. Hit D on the keyboard. Smaller brush. 50% of 50%. Right? So that makes it overall the 25% of the ship. Right? With an overview, it makes much more sense, I guess. So this is 25. This is 25. And this here. Um, briefly, I'm just going to do the same technique. Here's an X. And, you know, here's the part where I think this technique is extremely important. That's why I'm making this video about it, because I, I noticed that it's something that I can definitely share uh, that could be extremely helpful. Sometimes you're talking to someone and, um, you know, you you ask them or they ask you, what do you think the percentage of an, uh, an object in an image? Let's say, for instance, let's say I have a, a frame like this. And someone asks me, what is the percentage of this in relation to the full frame? I have no idea. So in my head, this is what I do. Um, I cut it in half and then I cut it in half. Does this cover like as much as this? Well, in terms of the length, yes. So if they're asking with the same degree it is in, uh, you could say it is about 25%, but you know, it's very thin. So technically it would be as, as thin as maybe this much or slightly this much. So this is how you eyeball things. So uh, you can just say, um, possible if this was thicker, if this plane was thicker, then I would say easily uh, maybe 20 to 25 percent, right? But it's very thin, so technically it can be about not as thin as this much, maybe. Maybe I would give it some more thickness because it's thin. So this should be good enough. Like so if someone asks you how much, how many pixels does this take? out of the composition. So I would say this much, but then what is this much, right? Flipping the uh, question mark, and then you can question marks from everywhere, right? What is that percentage here? Well, I do the same technique here. Let me give a red color here. I would say, I'm looking for this, right? But I would say here, this is the 100% of that 
rectangle. And therefore, this would be 50%. And therefore, this would be, what is this? Uh, what is this in terms of this whole thing? So that would be 40%. So this here, I'm just going to try to write it again, is 40% of this whole portion. So it's 40%, uh, sorry, it's not, it's 40% percent out of the, the half of that. So if I cut this in half, I'm just going to erase. OK, so this is the 50 of this whole thing, right? This is 50, and this is 50. So technically, in, if we were look at if we were to look at the overall thing, this is twenty five percent, right? So we have something that is from this area here. It's twenty five percent out of the height, and that specific area here is taking up forty percent out of that 25 percent and that's the that's the time to use the calculator and say let's say for instance um, let me just write it down here this here is 40 percent out of the 25 percent so what if we know, for instance, that the 25% here is about um, 50 centimeters or millimeters or inch, meaning that if this whole length, let me give that in a different color. So here's a bigger brush if this whole thing is one uh, 200 uh, inch okay if it is 200 inch then this means here it's going to be 100 and therefore this is 100 let me go back to the black so that means this is 50 so what is the 40% out of the 50? So this is how you calculate it, right? You use the calculator so um, it would tell you precisely. And the same thing for the length here. Um, we know that this is, I'm just going to copy this color. So we know for the length of it, it's taking pretty much 50%. So if this was, for instance, um, 350 or 360 percent or 360 inch for instance then this means this is taking half of that number 50 percent of it or half of that number so this is just a kind of an example i'm not sure if it's complicating the idea or if, if it's simplifying it but giving more information could be kind of could give you a different perspective so now we go to a somewhat simpler now example. We know that this here is 25% of the overall, right? So what if we hide this and those remarks and all this? Let's say we want to figure out precisely where maybe this line is or this line is or this line we keep adding more x's and lines for instance um, i know now that here's a new layer i know now that this is the overall 25 percent mark then the question is huh we're almost on the place where I would really want to add this one. So you can just add, if, if you want to ballpark it and say, 
Well, this is 25%. And this would be here, probably somewhere here actually, the 50%. I can even quickly just make that illustration. Obviously, I was wrong. See, it's very deceiving. So this, the half um, line for it is here. So right now, this is 25% here of this whole thing, right? Okay, but if I want to focus only on uh, knowing what this is, let's say just to make things really simple the distance from here all the way here is um, let's say it's 20 or let's let's just make it simplify it let's say we have 10 inch all this distance that is half the plane right so technically that makes this area here to be 25 inch then half of it here would be 12 and a half inch and then half of it would be 6.25 inch and then half of it would be somewhere here would be 3.125 inch and this would here this would this area would be around uh, let's say 3.125 let's say it's 3.5 so now after all that xing process making these x's um, over and over and then x and then all that now that we know that if I were to, mo to remove this layer and just create a new layer now I know that if this was this whole thing was 10 inch meaning that the assumption is this whole thing is 20 inch only kind of a weird measurement right it's like there's no way it's just 20 inch maybe it's a toy plane who cares so here this would be uh, the mark for you know uh, the five inch distance and now we know that by adding one two three point two um, inch based on what I measured somewhat 3.2 inch I suppose to kind of uh, the full length so that's gonna mean here we have 5 plus 3.2 inch where this meets now how precise do you have to be well that really depends on the job if you're doing something that is you know let's say for instance you're you're building something that has to be 100 percent accurate off of a perspective reference or you're trying to do the, the most accurate job you could ever do then this is where you go crazy with these measurements and again there is a, a room for mistakes right but at least you would know that you would be making the least amount of errors in this process uh, let me give a different example just in case what I said here was nonsense and or not clear I'm just gonna make a bigger brush here X and then X so the uh, the line here is again the, you know I mentioned the technique for copying things that are um, kind of parallel you can see here that because we have so much perspective change this one is in completely or evidently different perspective so I would sort of like match in between something like this maybe okay so this is the X now because of this identification for this region I would be able to tell for almost for sure or 
with some some sort of accuracy let me uh, clear this and make a smaller brush and a different color so I would do this X right and then same here so this is the 50% mark and I just want to know where this meets where this point here meets with the rest of the body so now I'm gonna take this and exit so seems about that much so technically this here is at the uh, let's say again go with the measurement of 20 inch okay so this whole thing here is 20 inch therefore half of it here would be 10 and then half half of it the quarter here would be 5 inch so we know now that this is 5 inch difference so at the 20 uh, at the 2.5 inch mark we have the halfway through and then half of that 2.5 inch is where this thing here meets so technically that would be 1.25 so you can pretty much end up with you know almost like making a ruler that tells you uh, every point of these where they are and then you can sort of based on the information you write down you can easily then start to see like oh i see here that this is around the area of maybe the, i don't know like 5.02 inch or something like that so i hope this was helpful i hope this was clear and i hope i didn't complicate things uh, but i can tell you with certainty that once you quote unquote install this application or software in your brain it's going to make things extremely more simple in your head to break down proportions uh, because the same technique with the xing and all this applies for like a same thing i mentioned you know if you're let's say there's a frame here for instance for this and I ask you how much it's taking out of the full image um, you can easily say well you know I can cut it in half diagonally so that means this is 50% I cannot assume it's taking the full 50% um, but I can assume roughly very roughly that it's taking about this much right uh, maybe you decide that of course there's an angle there and all this so maybe you could decide that this uh, colored region is 50% of that portion which means this colored uh, portion is totally 25% um, now I cannot write 25% of the full thing and therefore this ends up being identified as 25% of the overall image so at least it simplifies it right sometimes you just make a some sort of like a quick guess um, I can tell you that once you get used to this process your brain is just gonna make that calculation really quickly and uh, it would you know it, it's fun it, you know if you're OCD like me um, this is heavenly <laughs> anyhow uh, let me know if this helps uh, dislike it if you don't uh, like this video like it if you like it or just comment let me know you know maybe if you want a different example yeah uh, the main goal is to you know trying to share the information that I have so if it's not 
um, helpful, then why share it and waste your time, right? All right, thanks for watching.